Five Nights at Freddy's movie was awesome. From the actor's performance to the wonderfully crafted animatronics, the whole production was top-notch. But how exactly does this movie tackle Springles? Now, of course, this analysis video contains heavy spoilers from the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, so if you have not seen it yet, somehow, feel free to click off and uh, come back later. In this video, we will be analyzing the different suits used throughout the movie, how they seem to work, and finally, I will use a 3D model to clearly show you guys how I think it all works. Now for the suits. This is the heavy spoiler part. Throughout the movie, we see a lot of suits that are used inside the restaurant. And the first one we are introduced to is Ella. Ella is a doll from the novel series who makes an apparition as a child size spring lock animatronic in which Abby nearly gets stuffed near the end of the movie. This suit offers us a clear look into whatever this is. Sparky, Shadow Freddy and Torto Freddy are seemingly springlock suits as well, given their ribcage interior and metal lining. This is actually pretty wonderful, thinking that Freddy's had, you know, an operating Shadow Freddy springlock suit for some reason. And there's also the easter egg endoskeleton, which you can call Arnold or Tina, whatever you want, that shows us exactly how the springlocks operate under every angle. Wonderful. As for the main guy, the spring bunny suit, it features an entirely different set of spring blocks, which are much smaller and seemingly less sensitive, given he gets shot and the spring blocks doesn't activate. This suit seems bulky and very wide, it's logical given the skeleton is still inside. Now let's get to the analysis, the best part. Thanks to the multiple shots I gathered, I could figure out how exactly the spring blocks work from this movie. The Ella scene, where they break a perfectly solid and useful broom, shows us three aligning ribcage in a cage-like structure that opens on the side. Like in the games, they are attached to a central pole, but unlike the games, however, they are positioned around the abdomen. They are also bulkier and more heavy-duty. They have a much more mechanical design rather than the organic design of the games. That endoskeleton is based on the FNAF 1 endoskeleton model, but it's customized. For example, it has a completely different spine, and uh, it has a very thin hip piece and somehow they swap the leg parts for the arms. I don't understand why, but why not? The spring locks seem to do two entirely different tasks in this movie. It holds back the spine, opens and closes. Given the port on the spine, it suggests that the, the rib cages actually hold up the endoskeleton in place. While in suit mode, everything's open and leave space for a person to fit inside. The Ella animatronic seems to have its entire spine held back except for the shoulder piece and there's also the notable lack of a head when it's in costume mode which is pretty weird so we can assume that the head is taken out. Ella is designed as a child sized coffin given her arms are not made to be worn clearly the Ella animatronic is just some sort of coffin now, if we look at the Tina endoskeleton, we can figure out it uses an endoskeleton O1 head from FNAF 1, and I cannot see how that can be worn. Given that the spring body suit doesn't feature any spring locks near the neck, that can show us that the head is detachable from the main body, as I theorized earlier in my videos. The Alet doll somehow has this sort of blade in her head, which makes me think that they may be either for torture, in the case of Ella, or modified spring block parts that link the costume to the endo head. This could explain the torture machine. It might be a modified spring block suit designed to torture the heck out of night guards. As for how they are operated, I believe that the chairs and the mounting devices that the head is onto is an assembly station for the suit, where they are cranked and put back together in between shows. This could explain the utility of the torture device in the movie and why it somehow has a head mostly empty with some sort of mounting device for a wearer's head on each side of its head and why it has a similar eyes mechanism as Spring Bunny.
Each suit seems to be covered in a yellow foam, as seen in the work in progress pictures of the Torture Freddy body, and in close ups of the Spring Bunny suit in the Withering. It could be some sort of rubber or contact cement. It's the industry standard for foam fabrication, and it's also waterproof, which would be pretty useful in spring lock suits. So to recap, there's an endoskeleton, metal linings, a shell made of rubber, and on top of that, a suit. And of course, don't forget the man himself, William Afton, who wears a yellow work jumpsuit under the spring bunny suit to hide its junctions. Now, that makes him very abstract to all of you. So here's the fun part. I will show you exactly how it works with a 3D model made in Fusion 360. So here's Tina. Tina is overheating due to performing for hours on end and needs to be worn to perform for, I don't know, during Jeremy's birthday of, or something. After you get Tina comfortable into her chair, you open her belly to access the chest cavity. Once done, you can crank up the spring locks to curl back the main part of the body, the spine. And of course, you open the ribcage and once that is done, you can unplug the head, unplug of the wires and take it out after, of course, you've recalled the head spring locks. I don't know how that would work since the spring locks are turned into saw blades, but I can imagine some sort of rotatory device that locks into um, the pores of the endoskeleton head. For the arms and legs, for the arms and legs, given that the original concept art for Spring Bunny features an original spring lock endoskeleton, I can imagine that the suit itself has some sort of ring structure that latches into the endoskeleton just like in the games. But uh, perhaps they are not in the movie and perhaps Hematami, Scott Cotton, etc. just figured out that the original spring lock design really sucks and is really bad overall and unrealistic. Now something that is really funny is that the people behind the spring locks actually solved themselves the spring lock problem and made rearable animatronics with no spring locks, with no springs that curled back animatronic parts. Because, get it or not, the animatronics for the movie are actually just, you know, animatronics that you can take your part and wear just like suits without all the dangers that are featured in the process. Well, this kind of limits their movements for a lot of reasons that I can really get into. But it's still a bit better than, you know, deadly animatronic killer suits that can crush you from the inside out. Now, that being said, I am making the suits anyway. And right now, I, I have a killer animatronic to build. So next video will probably be some sort of spring lock mechanism I've got some good work on. So if you want to see me test these spring locks like a living dummy, then I guess you should subscribe and follow me, Instagram, Patreon, everything. So see you next time, guys. Goodbye.